loading a lawnmower using a high lift handyman jack. William Hovey Smith, 2022. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And we are in the midst of lawnmower trauma of a sort again. Uh, this is a John Deere, and it's an L120. It's an older lawnmower. It's got over 600 running hours on it. And it belonged to my late brother-in-law. And I took it down to the John Deere place. And they ostensibly fixed it. I ran it successfully for about two days, pulling a lawn rake. And now it will not start again. Or whether that has anything whatsoever to do with the original repair or not, or just an old lawnmower just giving up from time to time, I don't know. But whichever, yeah, I want it running. I need it running if I'm going to sell it. I need it running if I'm going to run it. So it's going back to the John Deere place. Now, my particular problem is I live alone. And I'm 80 years old, and I'm no longer the guy I used to be. I'm losing muscle mass, I'm losing muscle strength, I'm losing stamina, etc., etc., etc. Just the kind of thing you would expect to happen to an 80 year old, and others too. But, so, how do we get this thing loaded on the trailer? I can't push it up. With this heavy lawnmower, I don't know if I ever could by myself. So I've devised a method of getting it up there using the equipment I had at hand. And I'll show that to you. And in particular, this involves the use of a high lift jack. Now the high lift jacks have been around for a long time. And I have one that I've used since the 1970s and it's still going strong. And I use it half a dozen times a year for different things. I would not be without it, quite frankly. And if you live in a rural setting, or if you're going to live in a rural setting, yeah, you need one of these things, or its present equivalents. And let me show you how I got it rigged. When you're pulling a lawnmower like this, you're probably pulling with about 500 pounds of stress or something like that. And I have a piece of good rope. Uh, this is nylon rope, and as you see, I have it connected to the lawnmower just with a simple overhand knot. And this is the jack I was speaking of. And this was actually made in the U.S. at the time they were still doing such things. Well, it's an old jack but it's a good one, and it will last several lifetimes, actually. Uh, this is a medium-length version. There are longer ones, and it's oftentimes using for putting up fences in the West. Well, anywhere else you need wire fencing, and it has various attachments on it. You'll notice a prominent hook on the end facing the vehicle. And also, the lifting hook that you would expect to have on a jack. Well, if you get one of these things or the equivalent, don't take those accessories off because they are useful even though you may not be stretching fences. And I'll show you how. When you rig the jack for close range use, just using this rope, uh, you can rig it directly to the jack and just put the hook on the back of the trailer, as you will see me do. Now, the chain you see was when I was pulling a longer length, and I needed to put the jack further down. With a stretch in that nylon rope, I move it something like two feet at the time. When I get the center of gravity over the middle of the trailer, I'll be able to push this more, but right now, uh, no, I, I can't. So I'm going to rig it up with the rope and let you see how it goes. With a high lift jack, uh, you have two pins that rotate in and out. 
there's a lever at the very top that fits in the notch and you move this up to the elevated position and that activates it so when you work the long arm here you move up approximately an inch at the time and that's the process we're going to take this rope has a lot of stretch in it because it is a nylon rope after all. So about six inches is taking up the stretch in the rope. And then, thankfully, the lawnmower will actually start moving. And the jack is actually standing off the bed about six inches or so. And hooked, as you can see, to the rear of the trailer for that piece of angle iron. If I had any doubts that those wells were strong enough to hold, I would reinforce that with a 2 by that would run all the way across the back of the trailer so it would actually bear on every weld and every joint, and that way increase the strength. But for the 500 pounds or so of pressure, or, well, less now, more like 200 pounds, uh, yeah, uh, It'll stand that just fine. And so we shall proceed. I'll focus a little tightly here so you can see the action of the jack itself, which is an interesting mechanical mechanism. You can see these two pins moving in and out, and the jack working itself up the shaft. With every pull of the lever, it moves itself. Now we'll give you an overall view, and you can see the mower itself working, it, working onto the trailer. Now we have the rear wheels over the axle of the trailer itself and everything fully aboard. Now don't all of a sudden let loose of that whole lawnmower is going to go rolling back down again and you're going to start all over. So block up and then release your jack and from here I think I can push it in tight. a little stick like this and that releases your jack you see it falls free now I am in hopes that I can push it or pull it and get it to the back of the trailer and straighten it up a little bit to keep the deck from dragging against the sidewalls I'm an author, and many of my books are on outdoor topics, but I also have some significant business books. 
The most recent is make your own job anytime, anywhere, at any age in which I promote individual entrepreneurship. In particular, how to generate your own original job concepts and make businesses out of them. This book has been critically reviewed by both Kirkus and the U.S. Review of Books. My novel, Until Death Do You Part, An American Family Meets Their Sicilian Cousins, is now available as soft cover, as e-book, and as an audio book. It has also received favorable comments from reviewers. Again. Now my wet shoe bottom slipped against the wet steel and consequently I tumbled backwards on the ground and that was all the noise you heard. Hmm. All right, this thing is on the trailer and it's going to go just like it is, I think. Okay, we're going to tie it up to the back and I can clear uh, the gate now by several inches, so that's good. So we're going to lock it up and take it off. All righty. We got her loaded. And we're going to be gone with this thing. more on the road I took it for a trial run around the yard and uh, yeah nothing's moved so with a lock on the lawnmower with it in forward gear now oh uh, yeah I'm confident she's gonna stay put and I can take it into town and get it worked on this is Hopi Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt be legal be safe goodbye God bless and see you next time. And don't fall on your backside like I did. But Life has certain risk. And taking a fall like I did will happen occasionally to active outdoor people. Now, my fall was no worse than thousands of hits taken by football and soccer players every week. A person who does exercise, even at some risk, will likely be able to have a healthier, longer life than one who sits in front of the TV and watches others do physical activities. In short, be as active as you physically and mentally can be as you age. For more information about my books, blogs, and more than 900 videos, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. To find out about my acclaimed business books, go to createyourownjobsecurity.net. To listen to an interview about my novel, Until Death Do You Part, An American Family Meets Their Sicilian Cousins, you can go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Goodbye and God bless.